Well, that was a great introduction, wasn't it? Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. We'll start out a little bit better. Um, so we're here with, uh, I'm Paul Pedron. I'm the product manager for Service Desk and Microfocus Desktop Containers. I am uh, present you Zencast live just about every other week. It's the first and third Tuesday of every month. We will be, it's for the Zenworks community. So please ask questions. We uh, will be um, talking about Zenworks imaging with WinPE with our guest Moises Morales. Um, let me know if the volume's back up. I think I got it turned back on. And next time we're going to be doing the Zenworks Service Desk Leveraging Dynamic Forms with Todd Laycock. So we're trying to bring those expert guests in so that you can ask those questions you need if we don't cover everything completely. Um, so let's go ahead and move forward. We're going to go to a little bit of house cleaning. Again, as I mentioned, first and third Tuesday of each month, 9 o'clock Mountain Time. Um, can you hear me now? And so you can, if you subscribe to the Microfocus Support and Training Channel, you'll be able to um, uh, see when we go live. So I'll give you a reminder. And we always go live about 15, 20 minutes early so that you can prepare. Thanks, Jeff, for the confirmation. Uh, details and recordings. Uh, s some things that uh, have come up. You can. We're talking about unified endpoint management. You can find the recordings here if you download this particular one. It takes you right to the YouTube channel for endpoint management. Also, exciting news. People have asked. Um, so, what do? How do we see the old ones? We even had somebody call support saying, "Hey, there was a ZenCast that uh, I couldn't get." I couldn't remember where it was. I watched it and I want to go back to it. So currently this has been updated. We have October's and November's, so through the end of the year. But also down below we have all the previous Zencast from the most current to the old. So it kind of has, if, if you want to search on, you're looking for something on ZAM, you could search for ZAM, right? Um, or you can search for ZCM in the web page itself and then find and see what it's, what the particular topic was. And then the topic is here. It'll go to the beginning of the Zencast. The first discussion or demo, it'll go to there. If there's a second demonstration, it'll go there. So if there's discussion, demonstration, or demo and demo, uh, you can go directly to those time stops so you don't have to try and forward through. So I think uh, we did a great job putting that together, but that's all the Zencast. And we'll keep this updated regularly for you. Okay, so... Uh, just want to let you know that that's there, that's been updated, and we're glad for those comments about, hey, I, I, I would like to see this in our community. So hopefully we fulfilled that for you, and any other suggestions, please, please uh, send them our way. Um, so we're excited about that. A little bit of about Zencast Live in some of the settings. Log into the YouTube chat so you can uh, converse with us and ask those questions. Subscribe and notifications. Um, Please subscribe and then put in notification or comments in the recordings. We do answer those. And you can directly message somebody by using the at sign in front of their name. Also, under the config settings, you might want to turn autoplay off for the time being and set your auto, your quality to auto 72060p. Okay. Um, download this presentation uh, and then past presentations and recordings is there. Currently, the Zencast schedule is today. We have ZCM Imaging with WinPE. Part 2, Moises Morales, is here to uh, talk to us about that. And then we have some others through the end of the year. And uh, I hope some of those fulfill what you're, you're looking for. We have guests coming on, so we really appreciate all the guests and, and the expertise that comes aboard. What's new? We're excited about a few things. Zenworks 2020 Update 2 is out. ZRS 7.8 is out. There's a TID out there you can you can go to. There's a README out there that you can go to. Um, and then don't forget your appliance security checks. I noticed on Service Desk this appliance security updates came out. So check your online updates for your um, appliances. Okay, make sure that they're up to date. Just a reminder. Webinars. There's a couple of webinars out there. Uh, excited to say. What's new in ZCM, the official? Uh, we've covered it in Zencast. Who will walk you oops, through whoa, all on. the good things? 
So there's a uh, there's a Zencast out there on um, uh, on ZCM What's New 2020. Okay, um, and then there's another one on anti malware. Let me make sure I hit the pause button real quick. There we go. <laughs> Okay, this, these two have just been released in the last couple of weeks. If you haven't seen them, they'll be there. We're also going to be updating the webinar index, which is also in the slide deck. So feel free to, um, if you download this, you can go there. We, we have a few webinars that aren't posted on there in recent days. So we want to make sure that they're on there. So good stuff. Gives you more details. There's also a readme about uh, MFDC 21.7 and the exciting things that are happening in that particular product and being able to, especially like at-home learning, at-home workers, uh, just some great stuff in that product in tapping into even if, if you're academic and you have a learning management system, that product taps into that. So it's there. Another thing I wanted to mention, oops, I wanted to go back. I wanted to select this guy here. Disaster recovery, they've been expanding on this disaster recovery, um, particular part of it. We had a question, I think it was last time, if not the time before, about where the APNs and DEP and VPP certificates and stuff are. Well, they've they've gone through here and we've, we've talked a little bit more about um, uh, some of the things you need to do for those particular certificates or products that you have running if you're doing backups, okay? And then also there is a Sybase cleanup in here as well. Um, the cleanup utility, I believe this is it here. If you had Sybase and you had to migrate off, obviously if you went to 2020, you would have had to use this. And it's still you still have residual databases out there so you can free up some space, okay? Um, Zenworks Inventory Only Agent is a nice article out there by Oliver Wormwald. So be aware that that's there. That's a couple months old, but I don't know if I brought it up before. So if you are doing inventory on your Zenworks and you have appliances and you want to, let's say you have a service desk appliance or, or a Zenworks reporting server appliance and you want to get that into your inventory, this is a way to install the inventory only agent and then you can get it into either service desk or at least into your uh, Zenworks. Okay, so interesting article. Very well done. And then, of course, the last of our, our what's new is technical insight series coming open for everybody. Register here. We're going to have across the broad range of MicroFocus products presented. It's every other, I'm sorry, it's every week, every Wednesday, starting tomorrow, actually, um, through December 1st, uh, every Wednesday. So, be aware that that is available to you. It is, uh, an, uh, I think it's in Asia Pack or Bangalore where they're doing this. So it is late night, all right? I'm gonna be doing a couple presentations myself, but we have people, all the experts, uh, doing their presentations out there for their particular product. So that's good to have. Um, and even if you can't make it because it's so late for us in North America, you can always go back to the recordings after they're done, okay? So those are a couple things that's what's new. We're going to look at, uh, again, the customer portal. If you're having any issues, report discrepancies here. And there's some resources on there on how to get around, how to log in. There's some videos and so forth to help you out. So uh, those are there so that you can uh, kind of make sure. We want to make sure that you can get to your activations, your license keys, the downloads before you plan that or as you plan your upgrade so that you're not in the middle of upgrade and you can't get to a particular uh, license key or something. A little bit of recap, last Zencast, ZCM Asset Management, Oliver Vormwald uh, was our senior solutions consultant, MicroFocus, talked about inventory management, which talked about identification, collection, monitoring, reporting. It was very, very intensive. We went a little bit long on this one, um, but we wanted to make sure it was complete. So we got all the way through the software usage, the license management, even the contract management and how you combine them together. So it was a great review if you have the suite or if you have asset management and you wanna get a little more details on how to do something, how it ties together, what the catalogs are and those types of things, this is a great resource for you. So it's posted out there on the site. 
Now for today's today's agenda, we have uh, Moises Morales. He's a global tech support, backline support engineer. He's going to talk to us a little bit about how to migrate from Linux to WinPE, talking a little bit about configuring, scripting, convert bash to batch, editor, and those types of things. So Moises, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, hey. Let's get Moises back on. We got him on. I hear you. I'm going to go full screen so I can... You can tap into it. I'm going to turn my face off. Hang on a second. Webcam is off. So how are you doing today, Moises? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you for joining us today. You've been on backline support for a while now. Yeah, uh, like 11 years. Wow. 12 years. <laughs> yeah, and I know you. when I was a customer and even in support, it was like, if it's imaging, check with Moises, you know, so... <laughs> so you got you got the uh, you got the bull by the horns for the for that that part of the product. So we appreciate you being here. I'm going to basically turn it over to you. What I'll do is, uh, Chad, if you have any questions, please shout them out. I'll interrupt Moises in in at a good time and and ask those questions. And then, um, but I'm just going to turn it over to you. I know that we started this series. Uh, we had series one, and then. Uh, you're unfortunately unable to make it, but gave us some great two videos to kind of give us a teaser for today. So uh, I appreciate you coming in again and, and giving us some details on imaging. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul, for the invitation. Uh, hello, everybody out there. Thank you for joining this uh, session today. Uh, yeah, so last time, uh, I guess on the previous session, uh, we did a demo on how to uh, enable WIMPE. Just wanted to talk, expand about, on that, and 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 uh, trying to understand how this works and why this is important for you. Just going a little bit on the, the history. Um, so over since the beginning of SendWorks, imaging has always been done on on Linux, right? So we we use Linux, uh, the current Linux distro, which is used as SUSE, and we uh, what we do we put uh, special tools that allows you to uh, make and restore images. Now, um, over many, we're talking about five years or, or longer, you know, li uh, Linux was very important. A lot of desktop uh, vendors uh, consider consider Linux as, as, as something important. You know, a lot of uh, vendors even provided uh, drivers for Linux every time they they release a desktop uh, machine alongside with the with the Windows Windows drivers, and at, at that time, I mean, uh, Linux, it was uh, seen as a possibly a replacement for a, a Windows workstation. It was big, so vendors uh, used to embrace it really well, but that that hype uh, went down, and nowadays vendors only release drivers for. For Windows, they don't. They not, no longer release drivers for for desktop devices. They do for servers type devices, but not for for workstation type devices. So what happens is now the open source community has to uh, come up with a driver. In most cases, they just have to adapt an existing driver, make some modifications in order to make it to work with the new chipsets on the on the workstation. So that's that's why it's it's important. Uh, now, now to embrace more WIMPY because of this fact, you know, vendors are not providing not providing Linux drivers uh, for workstation machine as they used to do before. Uh, once in a while, we get customers, you know, having issues with uh, Linux imaging where the driver is not being detected or Linux is not able to look to boot, whatever. Uh, and we find that yeah, there is no driver for this. We have to wait for the next for the next update on the Linux kernel, on the Linux distribution uh, distro, uh, to be able to, to get those machines to work. But if you uh, embrace WinPE, that problem will never happen, you know, because every every vendor will release uh, Windows driver drivers every time they release their, their, their machine. So for, for some customers that are not, you know, most customers are not buying like the latest devices right when they release. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Linux imaging will work just fine. 
but we have we have a few customers where they they're always embracing the newest or the latest uh, workstations or laptops and and they run into this problem you know so so that's why the importance of of having this enabled or using at least some of some of the features in your in your zone um so as you can see um so here in the screen we have a uh, uh, the zzz the web interface i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to let's say a bundle uh, so now now you will see for instance this is a a bundle i have a preview bundle and this 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 is new with WinP since we started supporting WinP, you know. So you have now the ability when you create a preview bundle, you choose the image, but you also can say, I want this image to be restored using this imaging engine. So you can choose in here which one you want. So I'm going to say cancel here. So that, that gives you the ability, you know, you can say, well, some customer believe, you know, once you enable WinP, you're stuck with WinP, and you can no longer do Linux, but that's not the case. You can have WinP and Linux working alongside, and they don't interfere with each other. So that's the beauty of it. You know, you can you can have you can have your existing imaging environment, and um, and you don't have to worry about enabling WinP because as soon as you enable WinP, nothing changes for for Linux imaging envir environment. That way. Uh, you can have just a few devices imaging with WinP and the rest as normal. You know, you can have your, your Linux as, a, as it was working before. So that's the beauty of it. You can have both uh, systems or, or environments working at the same time and they don't, they don't interfere with each other. Okay. Um, so from the last session that we did or that you guys did with, uh, with WinP, you were able to enable um, uh, WinP in your zone, and this is configured under preboot services, configuration preboot services, and you should have this enabled. You have you specify your WinP WIM uh, for 32 and 64 bit, and then image X if you want to do WIM images, which you can do as well. Uh, so as, uh, I assume that you have this already enabled, so you're you're pretty much ready to do uh, Windows imaging. Sorry, WinP imaging. So one of the one of the main things uh, customers um, ask about is, you know, how do I how do I start? You know, what do I if I have my Linux environment or my Linux imaging environment? How do I change? How make how do I make the switch to Windows? And we can go to that very very simple. So basically. Um, for so if you have existing so let me see here so in here I have you know in my server I have several images in here so if you have existing imaging files and assume you know they're all the all these imaging files are Linux based so they're they were made with the Linux imaging environment now you're wondering okay so why do I do with those images you know how do I make the conversion and the conversion is pretty simple. Well, all you need to do is you will need to restore. You will need to restore your image. Let's say uh, this is the imaging. I'm not sure if you can see the bottom one here. But this is this is the Linux imaging environment, the command prompt. And if you um, need to convert a Linux image or a Linux uh, a Windows image that it was made with Linux imaging environment, you will need to restore that image. So in here, I'm just saying, you know, P C N G. So you will need to restore that image into your into uh, the machine. Let's see if this is gonna work. So in here, so I put it, I put it into the Linux imaging environment. 
and then I'm going to make uh, to restore my existing image. So let's see. Let's go back. Let's go back one of the, my images that I have here. So I have 10, 20 H2. So this is an existing image, but it was made with Linux. So I'm going to restore that into this machine. So it's going to go through the, to the uh, image restoring process. And let's pretend, you know, you're, let's pretend you're, you're done with this. Now we're going to go now on the same machine, you will have to boot into WinPE without allowing the machine to boot into Windows, right? Because we, if, if, it boot, if it boots into Windows, it will trigger the first boot and whatever you have configured for the first boot. So it will, it will, ruin, it will ruin your, 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 your environment for the first boot. That makes sense. So, so, you, so you want to catch it before it reboots and then make an WIM image. Exactly. Right. Well, it'll be a ZMG image, but it'll be, it'll be based with with Win P. With Win, gotcha. Right. So, so in here I was, I was make, I'm making the image, but now pretend this is done, and now I rebooted the machine, but this time I'm booting into Win P. E. And this is how you, what you get when you boot into Win P. E. And you say, you say, um, uh, exit. And then from here, you create the image. So I will say IMG make image um, let's see, this is oops, IMG. I, and I'm putting the IP in here because I put it from boot CD in here. So I have to specify the address of the server. So in this case, you booted off of a CD that you made for the win boot. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I I have problems. I would have done Pixie, but I had problems with my my environment here, so yeah. I'm using Boot CD. So you can do a Pixie as well. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The same thing. It, it, in Pixie, you don't have to specify the IP, you know, because it right. knows right. Thanks. where you boot it from. So I. Okay. So I apologize. I don't have an image in here in this VM, so this VM doesn't have. But this how you would, this is how you would store the image now, in your device. That makes sense. So basically, you brought it down as a as a Linux created, and then you, before it came up, you booted it and created a WinPE image. Uh, that is correct. So, and that's it. I mean that that's the conversion. So, um, some people are afraid of this or thinking that they had to, you know, redo the whole thing again and start an image from scratch and build a new machine from scratch and save all the apps and everything. But no, the conversion is, is pretty simple, you know, so you restore the image using Linux because that was the image was made of, made from, and then you reboot the machine without allowing it to boot into Windows. You boot into WinPE and then you make an image using WinPE. And very now your image is WinPE. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, so it's just restore and create a new one and and that's how you will convert a uh, 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 Linux image, Linux based image into a WinPE based image. So, yeah, so that'll be one step. I mean, if you have existing images that are Linux, this will be a, an easy way to convert them. So, we don't have a tool. Some customers are, are wondering, you know, if there is a tool to convert or, you know, a command line that will convert, you know, an image from one type to the other one. We don't have a tool. Uh, per se, you know, but but the conversion is, is pretty straightforward. You know, restore and make, and that's how you uh, convert the, the image. So. Okay, so this is one way that can allow you to, you know, migrate to WinPE. Now, the biggest the biggest concern that I see from customers that are you know reluctant to uh, to move into WinPE is the fact that they have an existing, you know, they have existing scripts 
that are based on Bash and Linux Bash, and you know they're wondering how they're going to convert those those scripts to to uh, to WinP. You know, it will, it will take time. You know how difficult that will be. And, and to be honest, uh, the conversion could be the um, the skeleton of the script per se. You know, is pretty pretty much the same. Just the syntax is what the challenge is, you know. And I have an example in here. <clears throat> For instance, in here I have this is um, a Linux uh, batch script, you know, where I just have I create a preview bundle with this script, and then the script will make some determination on what I, what am I supposed to do, what kind of what what kind of image am I supposed to put in that machine. And just to go explain this script, pretty simple, you know, is is we're we're finding out the machine model, which HW info, making some uh, uh, cleaning up some of the string, and replacing let's say you know spaces with underscore, and I get the and I get the model, you know, let's say you know Lenovo, T forty ten whatever model it is, you know, so I have I have a, I get the model here. And then another thing that I'm parsing here is the IP address. I'm uh, obtaining the IP address and then parsing it. And just I just want to get the IP address of the machine that is booting. And then I'm replacing the IP ad the the IP address the dots in the IP address with a dash. So eventually I want to make this machine name to be the model. A dash and then the IP address. This is just this is just an example. You know, a lot of people do many different things of how to name their machines or how to sure sure make make other settings. You know, but in this example, I'm just making you know I'm just making the model followed by the IP address. Now I'm doing the sysedit. I'm doing a clean clean up the sysedit. Uh, sorry, this uh, the ISD the image safe data. Just make sure it's clean. I'm I'm setting the uh, the computer name, which is going to be uh, the machine name that I that I defined before, you know, uh, which is the the machine model followed by the IP address. And then in here, I'm doing based on the model, I'm applying different I images. You know, if this is and this is just an example. This is a VMware, you know, type of device. I'm applying this. Uh, this image, this is an Optiplex type of machine, a Dell type of machine, I'm applying this image. It is a, a Lenovo type of machine, I'm applying this other image. So this is, so you, in here you can see there is some logic being uh, executed uh, at runtime, you know. So to automate your, your imaging process. So automatically we'll decide what kind of image will go to your, to your machine based on the, on the hardware information. After this, uh, uh, case statement, um, you know, I'm doing an add-on per se, you know, I'm adding an antivirus add-on and then uh, adding the novel client add-on. And at the bottom, if, if, if everything is successful, I'm doing uh, just making a flag saying this device was just imaged. Uh, sorry, it was a scripted image true and then just image true. So the device knows that in the next boot, there is no need to go into Pixie anymore. Because the machine was just image, and at the very end, I'm just doing a reboot. So this is nothing new for you guys. I mean, if you've done imaging before, you've done scripting imaging before, this is nothing new. Just, just regular bash, and you can do crazy stuff. I mean, you can do. I've seen customers that make a full menu with multiple questions. You know, a lot of things. You can do a lot of interface with the, where a user can enter some information. And eventually make the decision of what to apply, what drivers to to add, and what image to 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 include. So, so yeah, so you can do a really really nice really nice uh, customized environment for your imaging process. So, all right. So this is nothing new. Now the problem is okay. So if I have this in my current environment, what do I do for Windows? You know. So if I move to WinPE imaging, obviously this script. Is not going to run, right? <laughs> so uh, we, Windows doesn't understand this bash scripting. So, right. So the the what you will need to do is you need to convert the script, and this is where the the, the work uh, 
this is what <laughs> you have to put some time on it. You will need to convert the script into a batch type of, of script, you know, to be able to, or to be to allow WinPE to execute that. So I have a similar script that I converted using bash, this on the other side. But the 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 logic, I mean the the logic is the same, you know, it's step by step, the conversion is a step by step. The main problem with batch is parsing uh, strings is kind of a pain. <laughs> It's really painful to parse strings or uh, find substrings on a on a you know on a, whatever other string you have and a string parsing is really a pain in the butt for uh, when doing uh, WinP or when doing batch scripting you know so I, I and for this time I'm not an expert myself I was just trying to Google you know if you Google how to you know, for instance, how to get the machine model, you find, oh, there is a, there is a command for that. And, and then you say how to parse certain strings. So you, by searching on the internet, I was able to find the comparable commands from batch to batch, uh, Windows batch. So this is what I found. This is what I, what, I, what the conversion would be, you know, to replace, uh, replace a string, this is how you would do it. And then I finally have my model as I have it in here. And then to get the IP address, this is what I found. I mean, again, I mean, I'm not an expert myself, but just Googling, you know, how do I get the IP address from Windows? And this is what I found, and this is what I would use, you know. So I get the, uh, I get the IP address here, and then set the machine name, and this is how I set the machine name on a batch script. So this is, again, you know, just conversion, conversion from a batch to a, uh, to batch, and and I know it's painful for uh, for uh, for doing it in batch, but but this will be usually by googling you will be able to find a comparable uh, commands to be able to do those conversions for string manipulation. One thing you can notice in here, anything that is related to uh, to um, to the same words tool for imaging is identical. So if you run sys edit before minus C, the command will be identical. So that so that is um, that is the beauty of it. Actually, sorry, I mean, here it has to be so the syntax oops, the syntax is a little bit different here. You have to do percentage uh, to be able to get the value in, in batch script. Uh, so, but you can see you can see the commands for that are Linux related are 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 pretty much identical. So that's that's a beauty. So, so all the tools that you were using on Linux imaging, the syntax will be uh, pretty much the same. And uh, so, in here we have. Uh, oops, sorry, I was doing uh, some tests in here. It doesn't work. So this is what you would do. Then for the for the case statement for the switch statement in here to this, to make a decision based on the model, this would be the comparable statements that you would do in batch, you know. But eventually you will restore the image like this. Uh, you will restore the image like this uh, in Linux, and this will be in WinPE. But so you see, you can see it. that it's the same. In fact, uh, uh, you can remove this if if you put it if you actually put it from Pixie, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so yeah, the switch statement is pretty much the same, you know. Just uh, just the syntax is a little bit different. And then at the end, restoring, you know, your antivirus or your novel client is is similar as well. At the very at the very bottom, uh, the commands to set the scripted image flag and the just image flag are identical. So anything that is just edit img. Uh, they're pretty, the syntax is pretty much preserved, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the reboot command for WinPE is a WinPE util reboot, which is also a conversion. You know? So and the, and yeah, this this how you would um, you will make the conversion. Now you have your script, and uh, on your bundle you will create. Oops. On your bundle you will create. A bundle with with that with that script. Let me let me do an example in here. 
same. So I'm going to create my new WinPE scripting bundle. So I choose preboot bundle. Choose WinPE script. You were before you were using a Linux script, right? But now I'm going to use a WinPE script. PE script is and by default it goes to batch so I just grab my my script just paste it here and that's it now the the um, so going back to the scripting here to my bundling here, um, so you can actually have multiple scripting engine engines per se, you know. So you you know you have other other mechanisms. So not everything is just batch. Uh, what I, one thing that I found is Power PowerShell script is definitely way more powerful. Allow, allows you to it has already a lot of methods and functions that makes your life much easier. To be able to uh, to manipulate strings and stuff, so this is something you might consider. You know, if you don't want, if you don't want to use just uh, batch by itself, PowerShell. I mean, as the name as the name says, you know, it's very powerful. Give you a lot of functions, especially for string manipulation. That makes makes it a lot more a lot more uh, easier to read and, and to code uh, that way. And it's up to date and, uh, and most current used, right? So that's good. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, was, batch is definitely, batch was never meant, meant to be for stream manipulation and parsing and stuff. Batch is horrible. <laughs> well, PowerShell has a lot of functions that makes, makes it, makes it much easier. It's similar to Java and stuff. Sure. Uh, one thing that you need to uh, keep an eye on is that the Wimpy um, doesn't come with PowerShell. So if, so if you install the ADK and you guys went through that in in the last uh, in the last session, uh, so if you download the ADK and you install the ADK and then you go to CCC the web calls and I'll, I'll upload the WinPE that Wim, right? As as we have it configured, uh, let me go let me go in there. So the the WinPE doesn't by default doesn't have PowerShell enabled. So this WinPE in here that you uploaded doesn't have PowerShell enabled. So, but enabling is 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 actually very simple. Um, so in the documentation in here, have we have actually instructions on how to enable. So it's just a matter of adding four caps into the Win file. In you just follow these instructions, and they will allow you to uh, to add WinPE to your uh, sorry uh, to add PowerShell package to your WinPE uh, Win, so you'll be able to run PowerShell commands and, and scripts that way. This is under doc, and this is under documentation. Uh, let's see. Thank you. So if this is the documentation. The entire documentation I usually to find say preboot. Click on prebooting here, and then this is under uh, using images, imaging, and then under same words, uh, WinPE imaging. Almost at the bottom in here, adding PowerShell package to WinPE. Oh, good. I'll add that to the uh, comments after the recording is done. Thanks. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. So yeah, this is how you will enable WinPE because WinPE by default is not included on the WinPE that win that comes from the ADK. So that's that's, that's, good, that's good to know. Appreciate that. Yep. So yeah, uh, the conversion will be much easier uh, if you do PowerShell. No, no doubt about it. So, yeah. So this is how you would uh, you will make the conversion and.
And after that, I mean, uh, some of the some of the time consuming part in here will be, as I mentioned before, is you know the syntax and testing it and make sure the strings are parsed correctly, and then testing on testing it on your machine. I couldn't do some so this script may not be, may actually may not work actually because I haven't I haven't been I was only I was only able to test it with the VMs or VMware, but on physical machines things the strings things are a little bit different so. Some of the syntax in here may not may not work. So, so not test, test, work. test. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only way to to make sure everything runs correctly. So, um, I don't know what else. Um, so we created. Let's say let's go. Let's do some imaging uh, settings in here. Let's say you have a bunch of new machines now. Yeah, you, you want to image. So we want to do a uh, hardware rules, right? So uh, okay, so this is the part. So if you get new machines, uh, this is where you will set or configure the hardware rules. So this will be this the rules that you apply in this section will go to all the machines that are not registered in the zone. So here you can make a rule and say you know um, I don't know new uh, Lenovo I'm not saying new new laptops I don't know. and you say the bundle to apply. And you can you can give it a bundle if you know exactly what bundle it should go to that machine. But it's, if you want the make some uh, uh, determinations on the on the fly, then you will assign a script, right? So here I'm gonna make a right. on the fly because the script will allow you to make some decisions on the fly. I mean, uh, so so automate things for you. you know? And then here you can say, uh, you know, if this is, I don't know, IP address start. Let's say you have a small lab test environment. You say, okay, somebody boots from this a small lab. Let's say if you start with 10, 0, 0. Then you say, okay, I'm booting from a small lab. Then, therefore, I wanted to image this device. Sure, an imaging sub subnet or something like that. Right, and you can make other. I mean, you can make other um, filters other, are available. Uh, parameters, you know, that you can fine tune your 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 rules. The RAM is uh, less than, let's say, bigger than bigger than. AGBs, and then I say, then you can say, oh, it's a type of machine that I know what it is. So you can you can specify that, and you can add other parameters. There are a bunch of other parameters that you can play with. That if it matches this this set of uh, conditions, it will go ahead and apply this image script. And I notice the rule variables there too. Uh, what is that? I'm sorry. Right next to rule construction, there's a rule variable, so you can add. Yeah, yeah. You can you can specify your uh, variables. I never use this myself, but you you can yes. And then you say okay, and then uh, you have your your uh, your hardware rule enabled. And anytime a machine boots into that uh, network and meet uh, meet those, those conditions it will get this script imaging script and that imaging script obviously has other conditions or based based on the model it will decide what image uh, file to to apply to that device again trying to automate all those processes absolutely yeah yep. and and then you can go crazy I mean if so you had to make you kind of had to make a balance you know I mean you, you want to go really fancy or just imaging one machine a month <laughs> or, or right. you know, so, but if you're imaging, you know, 
10 machines a day, you know, you constantly image, you want to um, fine tune your script to make it easier. So you have to do less things, you know, so, but you have to put more time on the script. You have to put more time on, on, uh, on the conditions and testing and things. So you have to balance how much time you want to put in developing or writing your script, you know, so it, it depends. Some customers, you know, some customers don't use script at all. They just they know exactly what the machine what the machine is, so they apply a bundle directly, a ZMG, uh, a bundle with a with an image file, and period. You know, there's no logic inside. But if you're constantly doing imaging with different machine model, different types, you know, different conditions, uh, different uh, uh, bills that you had to deliver to to your uh, to your employees, then writing a script a more complex script will you know save you time so, so that's something you have to, you yeah have so to time up sorry. time up front saves you time in the long run exactly i mean repetitive things you know so, but sure you, you can definitely automate those things by writing a script and i'm going crazy i mean i've seen customers uh writing a script that are like you know 10 you know 10 20 pages long with menus and sub menus and and uh, they have a ton of imaging ZMG files, and uh, they just want to apply certain images, certain add-ons based on cer certain parameters. But they save it, save them a lot of time. You know, once they write it, you, you, they can have just any tech come and just when they need to image a machine, just plug it into the network and put it on Pixie, and everything gets it gets automated. Sure, fire and forget. Yeah. And each department has their own um, set of applications, so you can put those exactly. in the ZMGs and that type of thing. Right. Not all the machines, not all the machines that you build are you know the same for every every department. So exactly. they have the different 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 uh, configuration that they need to deliver. And you know, and again, you know, if you do it on a, on a uh, if you do that very often, you know, many times a day, they're writing a complex script and multiple and different logic, you know, conditions, they will, will definitely save you time. It makes it easier to use. For sure. And, uh, and that's it. I don't know what else. Uh, I don't know if you guys have a, any questions or. No questions have come in, but I have a, I have a, like, what is the context of imaging max? I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah, good, <laughs> good question. Um, so we do we do image uh, max. I haven't done a lot of it myself, um, but there are some restrictions. It is is very limited, you know. Uh, I don't think we support um, um, complex, you know, scripts in it. Or I think you can just take and restore an image. Okay. Yeah, you you got me on this. I don't. I haven't done much myself, but no, that's okay. But it, yeah, it, but I, I, I know it, I know it's limited. It's not the same as, as you know would be here. Sure, sure. Because again, it's another syntax altogether, another set of codes, and right. commands. So, and then so yeah, and then sorry, and then I mean obviously you cannot run WinPE on, on Mac, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. 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 So, so I have a question regarding some logs. So people that are doing imaging, there's pixie logs, there's imaging logs. Do you have a summary of logs that you could show us or? Yeah, for, no, good, different. This is different, uh, definitely a good question. And I forgot to, to include this in my, my presentation. No worries. Uh, for when you're running, when you're doing imaging scripts and, uh, or, you know, per se, hardware rules, you know, like in here, the hardware rule that we just did. Uh, you know, the IP address is this, the RAM is this. Uh, you you think this is what the machine is supposed to have, but in reality, it doesn't, you know. So how do you know? Like you say, you say, I, I, I will add another, another uh, a parameter in here to say, you know, Manufacturer, you know, they say, oh, if the manufacturer is equal to, uh, you know, I don't know, op 
of the black no, what's it say there, you know. How do you know that this, how do you know the machine will say, you don't know, you're assuming in here that the machine has properly configured the manufacturing name to be Dell, you know, you're assuming, but we don't know for sure. Right. But if you want to know for sure, you just go to the log and your, your, your best friend, this is, this log is your best friend. You have to use it all the time. And this is, uh, let me see, we're on the log, same works. Your best friend is this PV, the PV surf, Novell PV surf. And, and this is an example, you know, in, in this log, it will tell you each parameter, you know, so you say the network, the type of network, the MAC address, this is what it, so when you pixie boot the machine, the PV serve will log all the information that the machine has, you know, because when, when you pixie boot, the machine sends all that information to the server and the PV serve log is where it records all that information. So the, 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 the bio serial number, the product name, you know, and then you, you think that the manufacturer is going to say something, but when you look at the log, it says something else, you know, it's called, or it's, you know what I'm saying? So this is the best way to know for sure what the device is sending to the server, because based on these parameters, the server will make the determination. Okay. So you meet this parameter, therefore I'm going to give you this reboot image uh, bundle right so, so that's where this, your that's where your variables come in and get in the right right you yeah. will verify you know for instance nice. in my in, in the example that we did you know if the IP address start with 10 0, 0 something but you find out well in here start 151 what, so what's wrong you know but this how you troubleshoot you know well, because you 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 know for sure what the device is sending right. and based on these parameters Based on these parameters, the rules will apply. You know, whatever is whatever says in here, that's what the the server will will decide and apply those rules. You know, based on those on those parameters. That's awesome. Very important. Yeah. Very definitely very important. Thank you. To to use this log, and now another thing that I want to mention is this log. By default, is not that verbose. You have to make sure you change the verbosity of that log because. Let me show you this, how uh, this is configured. So the preboot uh, server, pre PV serve service has a configuration, a configuration uh, file, which is this one here. And this is, you know, this is under ETC, under configuration uh, folder. And in here you have to change by default, Actually, the default is number two, so normal. But under, so when you install a new server, you know the default is number two, the, the log level is number two. But normal doesn't log all the details about the machine, you know, the model and all the, all the hardware details. You have to be number three at least. And I usually do number three, I don't know. This, I, don't, I usually don't use number four because it brings too much in the log. But number three uh, will be enough for for troubleshooting your your uh, your scripts or your hardware rules. So, so again, so by default it's number two. So if you don't see anything written in the log, the PV serve log, you might want to check this configuration log and make sure it's set to level three or four. You know. Good to know. Yeah, that's to, great. To get, to get that verbosity, yeah. And then if, if you change that log, if you make any modification, you will need to restart uh, the service, just no matter. This will restart the, the PV serves since you make a change. Sure. Yeah, that's, uh, thanks, thanks for asking. That uh, definitely was very important that I was, I was missing to be able to, to have proper or troubleshoot issues with hardware rules and what parameters apply and why my, why my uh, my preboot imaging bundle is not kicking in when I, you know, pixie boot? This this could be a reason. You know, the parameters may be off a little bit. So, sure. Well, if there's any other questions, please put them in chat.
Um, I do have one more question. Pixie, Pixie Boot. I'm going to throw you off again. We didn't discuss this earlier, but Pixie Boot's yep. doing no work to do, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and you should have work to do. What is some of the Pixie Boot log? I know it's a very uh, um, it's very simple process. I learned from you and support, and even customers calling in for support. But what's the uh, pixie boot? So, yeah. So it will be so. So it depends, you know. So if the machine is not registered, then you're using a hardware rule, right? Right. To be able to get an image, because uh, you cannot. The hardware rule only applies to machines that don't have, they're not registered into the zone. Um, so when the machine boots uh, into Pixie, there is a little uh, code that is executed. Let me, let me show you this. Uh, let me go to, let me see a log here. So this is uh, the TFTP log. Expand this. Um, Let me find a machine. All right, so this, for instance, this is a machine that is, uh, T3. All right, so this is, um, for instance, this, this this machine here. So you see this Novell M- MVP sys? Right. This is um, a binary file that is executing, is executing during Pixie. So the first file that the machine downloads during Pixie is this little file. And this is a binary file that is executed by the firmware, by, by the motherboard itself, you know. And and the code the code inside this little file will send the information about the hardware information to the server, and and the server will reply back and say yes, you have uh, an imaging job that you need to do, or the server can reply and say no, we don't have anything for you, therefore just boot into the hard drive. Right, so right. in PC there are two options. You either boot into the hard drive or you either boot into the imaging engine. It could be Linux or WinB. But that determination has to be done quickly, and it's done by this little executable. Uh, so, gotcha. so this little executable will make the determination if you need to uh, boot into the imaging engine or if you need to just bypass this and just continue with the hard drive, put normally in the hard drive. Now, if you see no work to do, that means that you, the, 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 the device sends its information to the server, the server processes, okay, are you registered? No, I'm not registered. Okay, therefore, I'll give you this bundle. Or if, or the, is, or the device, you know, say, are you registered? No, I'm not registered, but your parameters don't meet anything that I have for you. Therefore, I'm not, there is nothing for me to give you. And that's when you get no, no, uh, no work to do. You know. So if, if your parameters here don't meet, don't meet the requirement. Uh, you know, if your parameters here don't meet the requirement. Therefore, you know, there is nothing for you. Or if you already register, but there is no bundle assigned to you as a registered device, then you will also get the no, the no work to do. Uh, and again, if the device is not registered, um, you will go to the lo- you will go to the PV server log. Oh, no, this is not the PV server. You will you will go to the PV server log and see if the parameters match um, your rule. You know the 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 set of the set of conditions that you put in your rule. Right, right, yeah. For that to apply, so. Cool. Well, this, and yeah, it's it's either I got something or I don't. Now, is this edit how much how much confusion does this edit come into the mix? If if there's I know we have to do a minus C occasionally if we're gonna re-image and those types of things. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you for asking that. Actually, the main the main 
the number one issue when customers call saying, you know, I, I'm supposed to have a, a work to do, but it's, but it's not applying. So they go in here and uh, they make sure, okay, is my device start with this IP address, my device has eight gigs of RAM, so, and I'm looking at the log, let's see, what was the log? And I'm looking at the log and I do see a match. The IP address is correct. The memory is correct. You know, so why is not matching? And so if you verify that this are a match and you still don't get a match, the number one issue is this device is already registered in the zone. And, um, and uh, so that means, so there is an object somewhere in this zone that represents that device. So one of the, one of the devices that you have, oops, say this. So one of the devices in here is actually, you already have an object for that device. Now the question is, how do I find that device? That'll be, you know, how do I know which of these devices? I mean, if you have a, you know, a whole tree, multiple devices and numerous folders, it'll be, you know, hard to find that device. The best way to find a device uh, would be like this. So we will do actually a search. And let's say, you know, I'm gonna call it serial search oh sorry i need to go to advanced actually you need to advance search oh yeah this is a this is a cool little feature in search yeah it's supposed to okay there you go so and then you can serve your search in here you know you, whatever you do you create in here you can save it and run it when you want so that's pretty handy so search by serial and then in here you will say, you know, I'm trying to buy a, de a device serial number. Because the device serial number is one of the parameters that are unique for any uh, for any device registering the zone. Sure. So you say equal, and in here you just so you say okay. So you will go to the log. What is the device serial number? So this is the device. And sorry, if you're being weird, it's kind of nasty. I don't know why they put a serial number. Usually for a, for a physical machine, it's just five characters, maybe six characters. But I don't know for, for being weird why they put it that way. But but whatever it says in here, you will search for. Okay. So in here, I'm just going to do an example like this. This is, this is an actual device that I have. Uh, you, the usual, this is how a serial number looks like on a, on a physical device. You know? So you would say if a serial number is like this, because this is what I saw in the log, assuming this is, you know, what I saw. Uh, and then you say, okay. And then you do a search and you'll find that there is a, ser there is a device, probably I don't have any here because I'm, I don't have a, a physical device in this example, but right. you will find a device in here that matches that serial number that your log is saying. That means that the hardware rules are not applying to that device because that device is already registered in the zone. There is already an object, a device object in the zone that represents that device. Therefore, it's, it's not gonna apply the, the hardware rules. So what do, I need, what do you need to do is you just delete that device. So whatever the device comes in here, just delete it. That means that device is no longer part of the zone, and now the hardware rules will take effect. But what about this edit? Do you have to clear this edit? Uh, yes, you have to clear. Yeah, you will have to run into the into maintenance mode and and delete the delete the uh, sys edit. And Windows has clear, clear this, the ISD, yeah. Right, and Windows has a this edit uh, executable that you can actually look at the image safe data, right? 
Yes, on Windows you have, uh, what is it called? It's, uh, man, what is it called? Win. Oh. Win. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is a utility. Let me yeah, go. there's a utility. Yeah, there is a utility. Sys Syswin. Syswin. Syswin, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So you run Syswin if you want to clean it from. Uh, from Windows. From the utility itself, yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't wipe out, it just goes out to the image safe data and wipes it out. It doesn't wipe out the drive, right? That is correct. It's so usually, so the image safe data, even if you format a drive, the ISD is preserved, you know, because it uses some sectors that are, that are uh, not part of the regular, where you, where you would put the partitions and, you know, the data of the, of the drive, so. Right, so that it can re-identify it as the same right. identity. Exactly. So, so, so some people, you know, format a drive. I, the, you think that formatting the drive clears everything, but it doesn't. So you have to make sure that there is no, there is no uh, sys in there. But in here, actually, uh, let's see. We have chips and networks. Uh, Oh, I don't see the. No, never mind. So I th thinking I was sending you the, the grid. The device grid, but I don't see it here. But that's in the image safe data, if I remember correctly. That's correct, but yep. but then it, you will see. Uh, actually, you it should show up in the logging here. Okay. It says like grid. You know, that means that the device there is a grid. There is an image safe data that is reporting that this device is raised to you. Know. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of helps us out. I'm sure out there in the community, I hope they uh, can, uh, they, they can, I'm sure they can get some extra info out of this particular recording so that you can get your imaging and kind of understand yeah, it a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, as I mentioned, I mean, most of, most of it is pretty straightforward. The only thing, the only thing that is a pain is convert. If you have scripts, you know, converting the scripts uh, to uh, to batch, you know, from bash to batch, that will be that's the main the main you know pain that you have to do in converting. Other than that, I mean, if you want to avoid issues with drivers. And forget about drivers, you know, compatibility, you, you you know, because when you buy a new machine, you're wondering, well, is it going to work with the imaging, Linux imaging or no? That's, that give you in the back of your, back of your mind that you're concerned about that. But if once you, you know, you, you convert to MP, those things are gone. And even so, just let me mention a, a couple of things. So, so usually the ADK, from Microsoft, which is, you know, the WinP imaging engine is updated between six months and a year. So every, maybe at least a year. So uh, every time they update the ADK, they include drivers for any new machines, you know, any new models. But even if you're driving, you know, if you have a machine that just was released and the WinP doesn't have the driver, it's very rare, but in some occasions this happens. So you, the driver is not already included with the latest ADK, you can still inject the driver, very simple, you know, it's just the same, 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 same uh, type of commands that you run for to inject the PowerShell. That's same, same, same way you can inject the, the driver, the Windows uh, driver for a specific uh, component, you know, the NIC driver or the video driver, you can inject it on the WinPE. Uh, very simple. You you have to wait for an imaging update. Those things, imaging update will be a thing of the past if you convert to WinPE, because you yourself can inject any driver uh, very easy and and you get get it to work in no time. Sure. So that's that's the beauty, you know. That's the beauty of of WinPE imaging. So. Right. Think, speaking of imaging driver set, we're currently on May, right? May twenty twenty one. Yeah, for Linux, yes. The the, the, the Linux. latest Linux imaging, latest 
Lindex imaging update, Im imaging driver updates from me. Yep. And then we usually release every, you know, every six months, every eight months, depending on how many, um, how many things we're seeing, how many devices are seeing. But for the most part, mo most, most of the things, most of the machine models do work with Linux. Just a few, you know, new, new machines don't work. And you can make an exception, you know, you don't need to rewrite and redo everything from scratch. You just need to add a little bit, a little bit for that machine model, you know, that is having, that is giving you, that is giving you problems. So. Right. Just for that one device. Yeah, that's great. Right. And, and, and then do the migration just over time, you know, little by little, you don't need to do everything at once. So. Sure. And uh, for the chat, I have the links in this particular um, presentation. If you download the presentation, I have the links to that May 2021 imaging update. So, well, Moises, I appreciate you walking us through. What well, else? Let you me got? let me mention please. also one thing. Sorry, sorry. No, please. please. Hey, uh, so I also get a lot of uh, questions from customers. Hey, when when are when are, when are we going to drop Linux imaging? <laughs> Uh, some customers are concerned, you know, we're going to be dropping Linux imaging. Um, to sure, be honest, because they've uh, invested time in it, right? I mean, yeah. Exactly, right? And then, yeah, it could be huge. It could affect them, you know, a lot. But to be honest, we don't have any, as of right now, we don't have any plans to drop Linux imaging. You know, Linux imaging uh, works really well for a lot of customers. We have no plans right now to to drop uh, Linux imaging. So don't, don't don't be afraid, you know, that, uh, you may uh, you may uh, find yourself in a situation where you can no longer you have to convert everything to WinP, but that's not the case. Every, everything we still support everything on, on on Linux. Just just but just be aware, you know. Sometimes if you call us for a particular machine having an issue with Linux, you know, not booting on a particular machine, just don't get mad at us if we tell you, you know, that unfortunately there isn't. You know, there is no driver for this machine. We'll have to wait a few months uh, for the because the vendor has to give it to us. Driver. Yeah, right. I mean, right. I mean, we can what what we can do is maybe uh, add some find a comparable driver. Some I mean, there are some drivers that were just fine on a new machine, but uh, they are not recognized properly. You know, we can add some of those. Um, parameters in the in the image in the imaging engine to allow us okay so for you find this machine model use this driver because this older driver works just fine with this machine model right there are a few cases where there is no actually there is no driver you know there's and the answer that will give you give to use you know you know use WinPE. unfortunately unfortunately we cannot we cannot get it to work even the kernel i mean just i mean we're not, not necessarily driver even the there i've seen the maybe twice, you know, where the kernel will simply not work on that machine. It's very rare, but in some cases the kernel will even boot. But it exists. So in those cases, you know, the alternative, you know, yes, is to use WinPE. But, but again, you know, we'll do everything we can to fix it on Linux, but there may be situations where we cannot, we cannot fix it. And we just have to wait for the open source maybe to come out with a driver or but the answer at that point will be, you know, to use WinPE. But definitely report it to us, right? So we know that that model exists. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have we get a hardware rule, a uh, hardware rule, a HW info output and see what the settings are, and we, we use we report it to engineering. But but we may find it, find in this find into a situation where you know there is not much we can do in Linux, and we we will do we'll help you in anything we can. So you can use WinPE for that. Perfect. And the nice thing is, is you can run them parallel. Yes, that's the beauty of it. You could that thing, they don't affect, they don't interfere with each other. You can do anything. You can do fa fancy stuff on Linux and do just one machine or two machines models on WinPE. Not a problem. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, that's great. I think that sums up your series. Um, you've taken us through quite a bit of different uh, configurations and setups and not just Linux, but WinPE and then the scripting behind it all. So I think we have uh, great content here and I appreciate your time setting that aside and, and doing that for us. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for the invitation. Yeah, if, if I mean, we're here, we're here to help, you know, just 
if you run into uh, to a problem, we'll give you advice. I mean, so don't be shy of opening, you know, support cases and, and seeking advice. You know, say, I'm in this situation. What should I do? You know, what can I? What will be the easiest way to get out of this situation? We'll give you advice. So don't don't be shy on that on that aspect. So. Absolutely. Well, perfect. Well, thank you, Moises. I appreciate you attending today and, and giving us your expertise on imaging. And and uh, we hope to have you on in a future date. But thank you so much for being here and taking your time out. Uh, thank you. Nice, nice working with you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. We'll see you guys again. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. All right. Well, that uh, concludes that particular section. I do have we want to thank him for uh, coming aboard and, and being with us today. Um, that really, I hope that helps out converting batch to batch, the editor, those types of things, some troubleshooting and some logs there and understanding that a little bit more. So um, we appreciate that Moises was available to give his time up today and do that. We did labs in the exercise. I do have product updates for you. Um, at this point in time, we're just going through the product updates real quick so that you could see different things. There's cookbooks, there's TIDs, there's there's the imaging driver updates um, if you're looking for them. Um, so download this particular presentation and you'll have the details of those. We have the details of different products and their versions here. So feel free to scan, scan through those. Um, and even some highlights on different videos, Tuesday highlights, uh, patch management course and training and so forth. So there's a lot of good information in here that you can get and glean from this particular presentation. Feel free to download that and um, we'll be happy to, uh, if there's any others that you're looking for, please put them in chat, put them in the comments of this particular recording. We'd appreciate uh, any updates that you may find that, that I haven't found or, or scoured up. Um, Hope to see you at the Technical Insights or at least review some of those recordings that are coming up with the most recent stuff. Um, but most of all, we're going to be coming in next next week with um, um, uh, Todd Laycox coming with us. And let's see if I can transfer over. There we go. Todd Laycox coming with us. He's a system sales engineer. We're going to be talking about ZenWorks Service Desk and leveraging the dynamic forms in all different forms. Uh, sorry, I had the I had the volume on there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he's going to be next time we're, we have Todd Laycock. He's going to work with us and show us some things about dynamic forms throughout the service desk product. But most of all, I appreciate your time, uh, and and I hope you have a stay safe and you, and you have a great week. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.